Well, welcome in the precious, glorious name of Jesus to the Ignited Metric series. My name is Robert Pears. In this, the second episode, I want to share with you four steps that you can take to enter in and have that abiding in the secret place of His presence. Oh, I pray that you are hungry. I pray that you've been drawn to this video because there's something from heaven calling you to come and experience and to know Him. And may that be the real deep cry of your spirit. God, I want to know you. I'm desperate for you. You realize that something in you is not satisfied. You realize there's a thirst and you're not fully met. God, there's got to be more. And you're pressing and crying out. I pray that this day you would experience and have a, a revelation by the Spirit of that secret place where you come to know Him. He becomes your all in all and your life is swallowed up, consumed in Him. I pray you're ready. So let's pray and let's press in to receive all He has for us today. And so, Father, we do come in the name of Jesus. We thank you. Father, give us eyes to see, ears to hear, and a hearing heart. There is no distance in the Spirit. So we stand and gather in the name of Jesus. We lift up the name. We give honor to the name. And I thank you for the presence bread, that warm, fresh manna from heaven, that ministers to each person the revelation that they so need, that they would stand complete, whole, nothing missing, nothing lacking. Father, put in us a deep hunger and draw us closer than we've ever been. Father, I thank you in the name above all names, the name of Jesus, I pray. And the church said, Amen. We'll go very quickly because we always want to start and build upon the Word. To Lamentations chapter 3, verses 24 through 26. And it says, The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore I have hope in Him. The Lord is good to those who wait for Him, to the person who seeks Him. It is good that He waits silently for the salvation of the Lord. That's a powerful couple of verses. And we have to get a hold of that, that the Lord becomes your portion. And if He is, then He has captured your eyes. He has got your heart. And there's a pursuit. There's a hunger. And you may say, I was so hungry yesterday. And I had such an experience, an encounter with Him yesterday. Oh, and we're walking in the afterglow and it was good. Oh, that today you'll be even more hungry. So that what you had yesterday was good, but it's not as good as what you're going to get today. Not as good as what you're going to get tomorrow because each day there's more hunger. There's more thirst. He is your portion. Smith said, salvation fills us up with the hope of the glory of God, with a great access into the grace. And so you're going to find that as you get a revelation of this salvation, which comes by the wonderful ministry of the Holy Spirit. We think about the secret place, and, and one definition is this, in Him, in the Spirit. And the Spirit of God comes, and He reveals everything that Jesus did on the cross. It was all finished, completed. Everything was done at the cross. And we have to understand that, the depth, the height, the breadth of that. And then He wants to bring you to the revelation of what does that mean in your life? Who are you because you receive, you believe in Him? And then what is your inheritance? And all the while, as He works in us, there's a transforming in us. There's a molding in us. There's a change. You become more like Him and less like the world. Smith said, so God is pruning us, teaching us to observe that those who enter into this life have ceased from their own works, which is Hebrews 4.10. Those who enter into this spiritual awakening have no more bondages. They have learned that no one engaged in warfare entangles with the affairs of life, which of course is in 2 Timothy. They have this new inspiration divine power. It is the nature of the Son of God. Something radically changes you, and you know it. God wants you to be in the place of knowing that I can stand and say, I know that I know. When you fall in love with somebody, some people say, how do you know? And there's something in you deep inside, I know that I know. And the proof is that how it changes how you act. Stuff that you never would have done before, things you never said before, now you do all the time because something has changed from the inside. And God wants to do something. He wants to so transform you as you come into the secret place 
which is the secret place of his heart. He then asks, give me the secret place of your heart. Surrender wholly to me. Let me come in and fill that place. Let me come in and be Lord of every aspect of your life, that I might meet every need, that I might be your source, your supply, the God of your salvation. Smith said this, I understand that Jesus could be interpreted in no other way but this. Whosoever desires to save his life will lose it. But whosoever loses life for my sake will find it. And in this episode, we're going to look a little bit at Jacob. Because Jacob is a man that many of us are exactly like. We don't want to admit that. And I'll never forget the day Lord Trent said to me, you're like unto me a David. And I like that, a man after God's heart. But you're also like David, a Jacob. And Jacob was a man who was very sincere, got a hold of the, the real power and the, the importance of the promise of the inheritance. But it was him doing it. It was always him trying to make it. Because how was the second born going to gain the right, the inheritance of the firstborn? How was it going to happen? And so Jacob is always manipulating, always working and scheming. And he's always running. And everything he runs from, he runs back into. And maybe that's the story of your life. It was mine. There was always a running. There was always a trying to make it happen. Not bad things, evil things. Trying to make the things of God. Always trying to get God to understand, I'm trying to do this, God. It was, but it was me. But there came a day where Jacob is in the land. He's sorry, he's, he's with his, cousin, his uncle. And in this place, he's been manipulated. He's gone through it. The Lord says, go back. It's the one thing he never wanted to do. But he does it in obedience. He goes back. But in going back, he realizes that it's, there's so much more at stake. Up till now, it was always him. But now he's got wives, he's got children, he's got possessions. There are lives at stake. And he's not strong enough. He's not able to face tomorrow. And maybe that's where you're at, and that's a good place. A place where you don't have it. Where you look and say, God, it's too big, it's too great. I'm about to go under. And you suddenly cry out, you need him. And the first step that I want to talk about is he must become your salvation. In Psalm 62, verse 6, it says, For my soul waits in silence for God alone, for my hope is from Him. He only is my rock and my salvation. My stronghold, I will not be shaken. I would talk about waiting. And the word wait uh, comes from the word to twist. And what happens as you wait, there's a twisting together. And we are called to be one with Him. And that becoming one, he twists us together. You think of a human relationship in marriage. God has to twist the two together, bring them to a unity where the three-string cord, this cord of three strings, I should say, cannot be easily broken because he's the third string. Bring it together. In the secret place, he winds us, brings us together. But there has to be first an on twisting off of us of all of the old. And we have to first see we need him. Because we've been holding on to all this stuff, always trying to make it, and we've been Lord in our life. So he must become our salvation. Smith said, Often you will find that you are left alone. Whether you like it or not, you will be left alone as Jacob was left alone. He was explaining that Jacob comes to this point. He meets angels. He's about to come into land. He sees and meets angels. And many people think, if I just saw an angel, if an angel came and blew a trumpet and said this, here's the word from the Lord, that would resolve it all. He meets an angel and it's not enough. He sees a group of angels, an encampment around his people. Hallelujah, wouldn't that be enough? No, it's still not enough for him to face tomorrow. Because you cannot survive on experiences. And many Christians have gone from experience to experience, but experiences don't build you up spiritually. You need an encounter. You need a waiting. You need a clinging. You need a holding fast. And it all starts when He becomes your salvation. He becomes the source in your supply. You stop looking to yourself. You stop looking to your resources. And you have to look to Him. Jacob comes and he realizes, 
all this is not going to work because I cannot face Esau. I don't have it. And something came on him realizing in himself that he needed a salvation. He needed God. And I pray that that's the first step as you get a hold of you need him. You absolutely need him. We've leaned on all these things, but there must be a whole leaning on him. He must become the rock. And that is demonstrated that you get alone to seek him. I talk about the secret place life because it's what we do when no one's looking. See, most Christians, the extent of their Christian walk is church time. And we learn the church language. We learn how to church pray. We do all those things. But they can become a form and have no substance. You think behind the scenes. A majority of our life is lived outside of church. That time outside, we walk, talk, act like the world. It always breaks my heart when you're at a place and I've worked day jobs. And you see other Christians and you're excited. There's other Christians here. Great. And you observe them. And everybody else is observing them. And people come to me, well, they, they're Christians. And you talk to them, and yeah, they're Christians. But they walk, talk, act like the world. And it's heartbreaking. And it does not represent the Lord accurately. And it's a life that has not been fully surrendered. They have not experienced the secret place. They have the form and not the substance. We're in a late hour where you cannot compromise and play games. You need Him. And so you've got to, when no one is looking, get alone. Well, I get somebody else to pray for me. That's good. But you've got to do this one. You've got to seek his face, Hebrews 11. And it explains that he is the rewarder of those who diligently seek him. If you draw nigh unto him, he'll draw nigh unto you. And to build this real relationship, you personally have to make a decision. In a normal relationship, there's only so far you can go by having other people do the stuff. Well, tell him, tell her. The intimacy, the development comes when we get face to face and we open up and we talk. And so you've got to get alone with the Lord in a holy desperation and give him the time, give him the place. You may have to come back multiple times. There may be maybe baptisms of tears where God is touching you and there's a whole lot of stuff coming out from you, but there's a surrender. And Jacob, sorry, in Genesis 32, verse 24, then Jacob was left alone. That's where his breakthrough came. Not before, not of the experiences. I know many people go to church and they have a great experience and maybe it does something good, but it will never ever replace that sacred place encounter day after day after day. Smith said, talking about Jacob, his wives could not make atonement for him. His children could not make atonement for him. His money was useless to help. And the, we have to come to that place where you look at, you cannot lean on something else, somebody else or anything. You have to make the decision, I need you, God. You have got to get a connection where the branch is now placed and inserted into the vine and you look to Him. That there's a letting go. We realize, and I look at my own life, all those years of making it happen, sincere but sincerely wrong. And there's a repentance, there's a humbling and a turning back and saying, God, I need you. My second step, once you get hold of it, he, you need Him, He's your salvation, is that He must become your refuge and your stronghold. He's the place that we run to. The King James says the word defense, and what it really means is a high place, a secure place, a retreat. He becomes that place that I run to. This is where I'm kept. See, we often run to people. We want the, the sympathy of people, and that's all they can give you. I'm going through a trial, so I go to this person that, and I want them to say something into my life. And what they do is they share, generally 99% of the time, support, sympathy. It makes me feel good but it doesn't deliver me. It doesn't bring life. I need to be able to run to Him and recognize what I need is what He has to say, whether it's edification, encouragement, or correction, or even worse, a rebuke. 
what he has to say is the only thing that will change my life. So I run to him so that I've made this first decision of him being my salvation and I go. Now this becomes my daily thing that day after day after day, I may not see an outward change, but if you take supplements, if you take um, various medications, you may not see the result initially, but you will see it after time. And you know, I remember years ago, um, I had some pain in my bones, and I went to a doctor, and he turned and says, you are deficient in vitamin D. And I'm like, that's ridiculous. But my mom was all into supplements, and she says, yeah, take it. So I started to follow the doctor's orders, and within a couple of days, I noticed a change. He was right, I was wrong. And we have to understand that every day that He is your refuge, things are changing in you. We want the outward to change. God starts in you. People will often see it before you do, so though sometimes you'll see certain changes the world doesn't want to accept but you will be changed from the inside out. Smith explained, what made Jacob come to that place of loneliness, weakness, and knowledge of himself? And so you have to understand there's like a touch that happens where we come and we realize, like he said here, we are lonely, we are weak, and we realize who we are. We are looking in the mirror for the first time and seeing ourselves. We never realized all our bad behavior because it was always somebody else's fault. They were wrong. They were bad. I remember we had this Zoom meeting, and God turned up in such a powerful way. And I just remember complaining to the Lord. Someone came in me where I was complaining what somebody else did, and they were bad. They were wrong. And I'm standing there feeling confident, and the Lord came and showed me something I did. And in an instant, I was broken. In an instant, everything changed. In an instant, my, I wanted to just cry out and say, God, I so repent. I blew it. I missed it. Smith went on to say, regarding Jacob, how did he get to this place? He recalled the grace with which God had met him 21 years before. When he saw the ladder and the angels and heard the voice of God, behold, I am with you and will keep you wherever you go and will bring you back to this land, for I will not leave you until I have done what I've spoken to you. He remembered God's mercy and grace, and something in you has got to start to remember that touch. All the good things, all the things the Lord did, who He is. Oh, we've had all this lacquer, we've had all these um, teachings of men, all the injuries, and they often consume the heart. But in this place of such vulnerability in the secret place, where God opens up His heart, you cannot help but place yourself and open your heart and be wholly vulnerable. It's a safe place, and you know it, but it's a place where you see yourself and you are broken. You stand wholly in yourself, defeated. You look back and you recognize not what they did, as I said, what you did, how you missed it. In 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 4, Peter said, For by these he granted to us his precious and magnificent promises, so that by them you may become partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world by lust. These precious promises, as you receive them, they impart to you the divine nature. In this place, you are seeing His face. You're hearing as you open the Word, Him speak it, and you hear it coming from His mouth, rich in revelation. It comes in and it pierces you. And you think about Jacob, all the promises that God's spoken, and God starts to remind you of all the promises, all that He's done, and they stir in you. They're like a fire in you. And they begin to break you, and they begin to melt you. You realize how good He's always been. You realize the depth of His love towards you, and that all of it, you have blown it, you have missed it, but He's never failed you. He's never forsaken you. And those promises are still living, still. You thought it was all over. 
You thought you'd come to the end of the road. But here God stands before you and says, now I can do it. I am with you. In Hebrews 10, verse 23, it says, Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. And there's this place where we can stand. See, in all this before, it's us trying to make it. Here we're standing, trusting he will do it. Not me making it. It's me standing, trusting he will do it. It's a letting go. It's a humbling. And it's a working in. Smith said, He also knew that there was only one way of deliverance. What was it? Only God could keep Jacob safe. God had met him 21 years before when he had left home empty-handed. And God had blessed him, despite it all. And you're going to look and see that God blessed you despite it all. You didn't deserve it. You thought you did. But in this place, you suddenly realize, I didn't deserve it. I'm a wretch. But you see the depth of his love and it continuously gets deeper and it breaks you and you realize he never failed you he's been with you all the time in genesis 31 verse 5 it says then i said to them i see your father's attitude and that is not friendly towards me but the god of my father has been with me and so jacob is speaking to one of his wives guardian laban and he's trying to say he, he got it god has been with me Throughout it all, and I understand, you know, I've been there. I look at a life and all the things that people did wrong towards me, all the injustices, and most of my life was lived out in a protest against that, in an outrage, in a speaking out against it, and declaring and using the word as a weapon against it. But in this place, I'm not moved by that. I'm moved by Him. If this is never resolved while well, I'm on the earth, it would not mean anything. It is the pleasing of Him. This place of trusting Him that in the midst of all this, He is able and He will do exceedingly abundantly above and beyond. If I can trust Him, if I can let go, what He will do is beyond. And I want to so encourage you to get past this place where you realize you need Him. You absolutely need him, and he's able to keep you. He went on to say, Smith Wigglesworth, if I do not get a blessing from God, talking about Jacob, if I do not get a blessing from God, I can never meet Esau. And he made up his mind he would not go out until he knew that he had the favor with God. You have to, in this place, understand you can't quit. You cannot face today, and you definitely can't face tomorrow until you've met him. I look at how many times in ministry that we were trained and we can open the Word and bring out a very well-crafted message. But the problem is you're His sheep. And I can't really give something that I've not got from Him. You don't want my head knowledge. You want Him. And I have to get alone to get from Him. I believe that if each of us believers got alone, sought Him, that when we gather together, we would so be much more blessings to each other. I can't imagine where things could go. The revivals that would break out if we learned the real seeking of His face in the secret place. And if you understood that in your daily life, you can't face today. Every day start seeking Him. Every day cry out to Him. Every day looking to Him. Without your blessing, God, I can't do it. I need you. I need you. Smith said, unless we get alone with God, we will surely perish. God intervenes when conflict exists. The way of revelation is plain. The Holy Spirit's plan is so clear that we have to have say God was in it after all. And you will find that in this secret place, you will see how God has been in it all the time. While we've gone down all these rabbit trails, we've done all this stuff wrong, He has been there. And all the while calling to us, in this place of holy surrender, if you will so allow, what He will do is always beyond you. God is not looking just to bless you, but to make you a blessing. It is always bigger. We are focused on a thing, usually us. And God always has something more. God has people in mind. He has lives that He wants to touch. He wants to make you a witness and a living epistle. So it's always bigger than you. As you abide in the secret place, you realize, 
I cannot do it. And that's the problem. We've always walked out in that inner court. So we've never had nothing to give. It's always about meeting my needs, getting my bread, surviving today, and maybe blessing somebody. But this place, in the secret place, where I now live, my life is wholly His. And it's God now working in me. And it's His abundance. It's His pressed on, shaken together, overflowing measure. See, I don't have it in myself, but He does. God doesn't want you just to come to the well. He wants to spring up a living well in you. So it's not just meeting your need, but it's touching everyone around you. Number three, you must cry out. See, the word says you have not because you ask not. Psalm 62, verse 8, trust in him at all times. O people, pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. And there has to be in this place a pouring out. A lot of us, we carry all this luggage, all this baggage, and we come into the secret place. We start to get the revelation. We start to understand we need him. But we walk out carrying the stuff with us. Pour it out. All the hurt, all the rejection, pour it out before him. Begin to cry because you recognize I need you. And everything I hold in my hand hinders you putting into my hand. Smith said, alone, he began to think. He thought about the ladder and the angels. I think as he began to pray, his tongue stuck to the roof of his mouth. Jacob had to get rid of a lot of things. He had been Jacob. He, as he got alone with God, he knew it. If you get alone with God, you will find it to be a place of revelation. Jacob was left alone, alone with God. You get such revelation of who you are, and it will break you. Pour out. Pour out. Just let go. You may wet your pillow. You may just, you're just pouring out so many tears. But every tear that you drop, he puts in a bottle. They are precious to him. He understands, he gets you. And in the secret place, he's there to meet you. And as you pour out, he's able to pour in. He gives to the giver. And so as you pour out, he's able to pour in. Would you receive that? Would you receive that? Smith said, we stay too long with our relations, our camels and our sheep. Jacob was left alone. Hour after hour passed. He began to feel the presence of God but he still not receives the desired blessing. And so don't quit. See, many of us get that first touch. We've finally got past, so we like to be surrounded with people. We feel good in company. We feel good lost in the crowd, busy doing the, the works of our Father, traditions of our Father. That'll make me safe. But this holy desperation has called you this day to come aside. And you begin to press in. You've gone past that five-minute prayer that you normally do. And all of a sudden, you've been praying for a while and you start to feel His presence. Don't quit. Keep going. Keep going. You've got to get to the place of an encounter. A place where you are wrecked. See, I love the stories of the various heroes of faith. Because they were those that went past the veil. They were those that prayed and got hold of God and were wrecked, swallowed up. Number four, you must cling to Him. You've got to hold fast. When you get a hold of the presence, don't let go. Never let go. Give Him all the time. Keep coming back. If you think of someone you love, once you get a hold of them, you don't let go. You keep investing. You keep pouring in. You keep seeking. You find opportunities. You keep listening. You keep focusing on. Psalm 63 verse 1. O oh God, you are my God. I seek you earnestly. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh yearns for you in a dry and weary land where there is no water. Smith said it this way. Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. The dawn had come and his hip was out. It was over for Jacob. He finally recognizes his weakness. He's wrestled all night and he's really been wrestling with himself. And each hour that went by, he was wrestling. He was getting a revelation of himself. Here his hip is out, and he would never walk the same. And he realized his insufficiency. And he said, God, I need you. First time, he looks, says, God, I need you. I cannot let you go 
until you bless me. Are you there? Where God, I cannot let you go until you bless me, until you put something into me, until you give me fresh revelation, until you give me the fresh bread, until you give me what you have for me. I cannot let you go. Smith said, and God blessed him. Your name shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. The, God, the change of Jacob to Israel was wonderful. Israel, the victory all the time. God is building all the time. God is sufficient all the time. And God wants you to leave changed. It's always heartbreaking when I see people that come out of their prayer closet the same as they went in. Oh, they may feel a little more blessed, but they're not changed. Every encounter should show change you. You should become more conscious of His presence, of who He is, of His love, knowing it, believing it, abiding in it. It should so mark you and scar you. You've walked through this world and you've been scarred by all these things. But in this place, He wants to heal them. In this place, He wants to mark you with His blood, mark you with what He did, so that you are so changed. You are no longer of the world. You are His. It's time for the church to stop walking in the world as if they were of the world. We are in the world, but we're of Him. And we must be wholly separated because the more you spend time in the secret place, you will find you have less in common with the world. Not that you, uh, you understand you are here by purpose and you're here by placing, but your heart, your mind is His. It's the secret place. Too many believers are too in love with this world and not in love enough with Jesus. May we become so consumed, overwhelmed, that we refuse to let go. In 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18, But we all with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as from the Lord the Spirit. This is a changing. And the word here, transformed, is used only, I think, three times in the Bible, New Testament. And it is used in the transfiguration because Jesus was transformed, transfigured. In 2 Corinthians 4, 6, it says, For God who said, Light shall shine out of the darkness, is the one who shone in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of glory of God in the face of Christ. It's a face-to-face -face encounter. When you've had a face-to-face -face encounter, there's no shaking. There's no going back. You know that you know. And many believers have walked in a knowledge about Him, but they've not spent the time to know Him. Let me finish with this. Now, Jacob had power over the cattle. Let me just step back so you get this first. Because he'd been blessed, because the master had spoken into his life, now Jacob had power over the cattle, power over Esau, power over the world, and was in subjection, sorry, all was in subjection as he came out of that great night of trial. The sun rose upon him. Oh, that God may take us on in the same way. So that Jacob, the night before, is a man defeated, a man overwhelmed, a man unable, a man insufficient. He has wrestled with God. He has seen himself, and he would not let go. He comes to this place where he clings and says, I cannot let go until you bless me. And God blesses him and speaks into his life. And you need to hear the Lord speak from his lips the precious promise into you. See, many of us operate on promises that we see. We see this beautiful promise written on the wall. We see, we, oh, we read a scripture, beautiful promise. And I'm not saying that's not good, but there's something about the secret place where we hear the master speak it heart to heart, deep to deep. And you know, and there's a revelation of it that you cannot explain. We take you to speak in tongues to explain it. So here you are, like Jacob, now in this new day, able to face whatever the world might come at, whatever the enemy may throw. Why? Because I am an overcomer, because I am in him, born in him, kept in him. I am in him, and all of the old let go of, all of me addressed and dealt with. And God wants to deal day after day with the old, all those issues, all those things, all the stuff that we've carried, He wants to so address as we yield, place it on the altar day after day, and grow and be consumed in Him. I pray that this message has blessed you, ministered to you, and you're getting it. And I encourage you to check out more in the series to really help you in these perilous, difficult times, 
to get a hold of the hope and the new life in him, to walk unshakable, unmoved. I ask that if this message has blessed you, encouraged you, would you please like, share, subscribe, and add your comments in the name of Jesus. Because as you do, you truly help us to reach others and minister in the name of Jesus. I also say, if you have on your heart to be a partner with us, because it takes partners standing in prayer to have the impact. It takes financial partners as well. And so whatever God would move in your heart, we ask you to consider. And for more information, go to robertpairs.org, go to the partner page. And if you don't have a local church, you need one right now, please consider joining our online services. It's real easy. While you're searching for a local church, maybe you can't get to one, maybe there's an inability, then fine, join us and get a word that will be minister to you in this season so that you stand strong and you're not out there on your own because you are not alone. You are part of a body. For more information, go to robertpairs.org, go to the About page, and then you can sign up. Okay, go to the church part of the about page. Well, I just want to bless you and let you know that we are praying for you. You are loved. And as I said, check out the series. This is a, we're redoing it, pouring in new revelation, putting up a new platforms because of the censorship. But my heart is in this hour, this late hour, to be faithful to the message given to me to bring people into the secret place of his presence and that intimacy of fellowship. So I just want to bless you and remind you that this is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it because, through, and for Him. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Thank you.